Hi, morning friends. Scott Brookins here. The question for you today is, how do you play? And you, you might be wondering, uh, how do you play what? What are you talking about? How do you play chess? How do you play checkers, golf, tiddlywinks, uh, ants in the pants, shoots and ladders? What are you talking about? Well, the question is more, how do you play life? How do I play life? And what I mean by that is that I think there's really two ways we can go about this. We, we play to win or we play not to lose, right? Have you ever thought about that way? I mean, you see this in sports all the time. I mean, it, it's very obvious, you know, think about last year's Super Bowl. You know, I'm a football player, I, you know, I was when I was a kid and loved to watch the game. But last year, you know, the, the Atlanta Falcons had a 28 to three lead after the first half. Right. I mean, the game was over. And so by the time the second half started, you could see they were playing not to lose because they built up this huge lead. Right. And then New England started working and scoring. And but they still had this huge lead. And every time they got the football on offense, they were playing not to make a mistake and not to lose. And what happened? They lost the game. I mean, it was, you know, a battle it was an amazing comeback, but they ended up losing the game. And this year, I was watching the college championship with Georgia and Alabama. And the fourth quarter, you could see the same thing happening. Georgia had a lead. Alabama was totally out of the game. And Georgia started to play the rest of the game not to lose. And Alabama played to win, right? And, and the teams that do that, they play to win. And so, you, I mean, you see this in golf and tennis and any sports activity where there's a team or a person going against each other, you can see that when we get a lead, when we're two strokes ahead in a golf match, then we start not wanting to make a mistake, right? And we ended up many times losing. You know, and I felt this a lot of times when I was performing. You know, in our ministry, you know, all of a sudden I was doing concerts as a solo artist. You know, in my career before that, I was playing in, you know, bands and, and, backing up entertainers, but I was in a band and it was a group, but with the ministry, God called me to, I was doing concerts and then speaking eventually in, in front of, you know, large crowds or small crowds, didn't matter, but I was doing a solo concert and there was times early on where, you know, my mind game was like, don't make a mistake, don't make a mistake, don't screw up, you know maybe someone's out there that plays trumpet and they're going to, you know, criticize you. And then I got to the point pretty quickly where I felt God just say, chill out. You know, you, I was serving God. God had me there for a purpose and I was the one doing the concert, you know? So even if I'm, if there's, you know, Doc Severinsen as a you know, great trumpet player was out in the audience on that time, that particular moment, I was the one, up on the platform or on the on the stage, right? And so I want us to think about how do we apply this in our in our life? Because you know, there's many times that maybe we're in a job and we want a different job or maybe we want to transfer to a different department and are we playing to win or are we playing not to lose? You know, maybe you know, I was in a job one time and and uh, I wanted to transfer to a different department and so I went over and I asked you know, questions of how do I do that? What do I need? And who do I need approval for? And it was a longer process. And I finally got that different job. And as I was getting to know the people in my new position, um, had dinner with them and, you know, hanging out. And, and one of the guys said, you know, when you were over here checking us out and uh, investigating this, I was laughing at you. And it was like, what? You know, and he said, no, I was, I was laughing at you because because you came over here to try to join us. And it's like, really? So you're, you're laughing at someone who's trying to improve their life or be where God has gifted me, and, and, and you're laughing at that. Well, good for you, keep laughing, because I play to win. And so it really was a kind of a, I was so surprised at that, that someone would react that way, but I think it happens all the time. And so I want to encourage you to play to win. You know, there's a verse in the Bible. It's one of my favorite verses that I've used in my mind and keep in front of me for our ministry that applies to all of us because it's speaking to us. This is in the book of Colossians, chapter 3. In verse 23, it says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart 
as working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. And to me, that means giving it your best. And so that's being on the offensive. That's playing to win. Now, will we succeed all the time? Nope. You know, are we always going to win? No. Are we always going to get everything we want and go after? No, we're not. Right? But if we play to win, then we don't have any regrets. Because when we've given our best and things still don't turn out the way we planned or thought, we don't have any regrets. We can look at it and say, well, I learned from that, but I gave it my all. And now I just need to change course or need to improve on these little things. So I want to encourage you, how do you play? Do you play to win or do you play not to lose? So I hope you'll like and share this. I hope, uh, hope this will help you in your life. It helps me just to think about it every time I, I think about these things. And so go have an amazing day and inspire others to do the same. God bless.